Guys, you can't just eat real food. You got to talk about it. And you got to talk about it with somebody that understands what real food is. Like these mustard greens and cornbread. Well, good morning, guys. Welcome back to Four Boys Little Homestead Slash. Four Boys Play. As always, if this is your first time here, thanks for dropping in. Feel free to drop in anytime you feel, my friend. Guys, you can raise a lot of mustard greens in a five-foot circle bed. And that's what we're going to be having for supper tonight. Now, if you like greens, I don't know what variety these mustard greens are because I got the seeds either from the local corner market or the local feed and seed. Can't rightly remember which one's off these seeds. But they just mustard greens. But I don't know how much y'all can tell, but they up there about 18 inches tall. And this ain't the first mess we beat off of them. But I'm gonna collect a little more here. And we're gonna go up there and I'm gonna show you how I prepare mustard greens. I'm just going around trying to get some of the biggest leaves. That'll way to give room for the other leaves to keep growing. And they just keep on keeping on until the temperature gets so hot that they Actually, they start losing their taste before the, before the heat gets too hot for them to die. That's why it's the best time to gather them is in the morning. Plus, we just had a, about an inch and a half, two inch rain last night. So they ain't gonna be hard to wash. Today, I'm just gonna be cooking straight mustard greens. But now, a lot of times, I take mustard greens to get me some turnip green leaves and maybe some kale leaves and actually cook them all together and just have a pot of mixed greens. Because I like all the greens, so it really don't matter to me if I mix them up or not. And my wife's the same way. That's the good thing there. We both like, I guess, any kind of green there is. We tried some of them Asian greens the other night. They pretty good theirself. They're way darker green. I'll show y'all that in a minute. They're way darker green leaf green. And they're a little bit stouter. They come to me was more toward the turnip green flavor. All right, that ought to be enough for a good mess but right here guys is the Asian greens you can see how dark they are and they're a little stouter tasting green but I I got some on both sides of these sugar snaps here now I didn't cook these down like I'm gonna cook these mustard greens kind of just done them like a stir-fried steam down and they pretty good but these are supposed to be a lot of more heat tolerant and keep growing on up into the hotter heat. And that's why I'm testing them this year, just this small amount in this bed, just to see how they do. Guys, the first thing I do is get right here on this outside sink and wash one leaf at a time to make sure ain't no bug on there. Like I said, we just got a good rain last night, so that really helps. And up there raising them in them raised beds like that, you don't get all that splash back after a rain. Have real dirty greens you gotta wash. And you see that right there? That was down on the bottom. You wanna throw that away, feed it to the chickens or something.
Now guys, after I washed them at one time like that, make sure my dish pan's clean, run some water in it, then what I do, I just tear mine. Yeah, I don't want that old steam in there. I just tear them just like that. I throw that down there and I pick that up and give it to the chickens after a while. But I don't worry, I don't lay them down and take a knife. Now down on the end, that little steam there, that's fine. But that old big steam there, I don't want in there. So after I go through and do all these, this way, I give them a good bath in that clean water about twice. Now the first mess of these we eat, which is like how I like eating them and them, also them turnip greens over there. I picked them when them leaves are so little. I call them tender greens then. See, you ain't got to do this part because the stems in them so little. You just eat the whole thing. And man, they were sure enough tender and good. But it's more work. That's why I plant them so thick. That way when you go in there when they're little like that, you can, that can be part of your thinning them out for later. Uh-oh, gotta rewash that. What was I saying? I don't forget what I was saying. Oh, that's why I plant them so thick. So you start out eating your tender greens, and when you go in there, you just reach down in there and pull the whole green up. That way you're getting your mess of tender greens in the beginning, plus you're thinning them out so they can grow bigger. Now them there, they could have been thinned out some more, but that's all right. I'd rather have a bed full with too many in it than a bed that didn't have enough in it. <laughs> a lot of people don't plant greens in the spring. But as you can see, everything I got out here that's greens you got to watch out what varieties you buying too they got varieties out there that does better in the heat you know in lettuce it'll get real bitter real quick when it starts getting hot but some of these greens will go longer than others you got to find you a good variety like i said i don't know what variety these are but if they start tasting bitter, then I'm done with them. I'll chop them down, feed them to the chickens, plant something else in the bed. But either way, <clears throat> my point is, is I plant greens every spring. It's actually easier for me to raise greens in the spring than it is in the fall. Because our fall right here in October can some days be up there at the three-digit mark. And then the night can be in the freezing. So you, in order to get them planted and big enough before our freeze come, like this year, come that heavy freeze in October, but you need to plant these things in first of August. Well, August, that's three digit temperature. It's hard for me to get something growing when it's that hot. But everybody's got their own thing. I just, it, I just do better. I just do just as good as raising them in the spring. So I, I raise them in the spring and the fall. And I don't worry about it if I'm wasting any on there, because that's going. It ain't wasted to me. It's going in the chicken pen. Chickens eat. So I ain't wasting nothing like if you bought them, you'd be wanting to pull every little piece over there. Well, I got to buy chicken feed, so this is chicken feed. So I ain't wasting nothing even if I throw a whole piece like that down there. Now 
Now these greens was real, real large. Sometimes you could just take it and slide down through there like that and it'd just strip it off. But you can see these are still tender enough. If I start trying to do that, it'll, it'll rip it off. So it breaks like that. So. All right, now the next step, so you see I got them in a pan of water here. It's kind of like washing clothes. That way if you see something float up, especially if you got any with bugs on it, if these was clean, sometimes I'll do that two or three times. And like right now, I ain't seeing nothing. I'll still do it two times on these. Now guys, another thing about growing your own food is you know what's on this food. I know these ain't been sprayed well. I sprayed these with a light dose of neem oil spray. But the good thing about neem oil spray, I could spray this right now with neem oil. 30 minutes later, pick them and eat them. Cause actually neem oil, actually, if you got some in you, it's got some good benefits for you health-wise. Now, I ain't telling you to go out there and start taking neem oil now. I'm just telling you that's an organic spray that actually has some benefits health-wise for you. I ain't worrying about these that have been sprayed with pesticides, how many times I need to wash them. And all I'm washing them for is to make sure I ain't got no dirt or no bugs on them. I ain't got to worry about pesticides because I'm the one doing the growing. Now we're finna move up to the Dirty kitchen, I call it, the outside dirty kitchen. And I'll show you what I do to put these in a pot and get them cooking. When I eat greens, I want greens. I don't want no whole bunch of different flavors and hot seasonings. So all I use is salt, pepper, and this is the salt I keep outside. That old ice box there is just the outside storage. And we're using avocado oil. Sometimes I use avocado oil. Sometimes I use olive oil. And if I ain't got none of that, I put a little vegetable oil. But I just drop a few of them down in there. I got about that much water in the bottom at this time. I just give a little sprinkle of oil. A little sprinkle of pepper. That was more salt. It ain't gonna get salt next time. That salt come out a little fast. Put a little more pepper. A little bit of oil. And I'm doing a little bit of oil. That ain't much oil. Dish pan full. That's gonna cook down enough that me and my wife, that's gonna be more than we eat tonight. Most time it's enough for two nights. There we go. Now I'm gonna add a little bit more water in there, pour it over it. I'm gonna have about that much water in this pot. When they cook down, that's enough water that they be cooked down into the water. I put the lid on it. And I'll turn it on high here just for a few minutes until the heat gets up. Then I'll tick it back down there to about a three and a half on this little electric eye burner that I use outside and I keep them at a simmer and occasionally I come by and kind of don't stir them just kind of give them a little flop over a little fold over but guys that's how easy it is how many greens you can grow in a five foot round bed that's more if unless you're going to be trying to preserve them and freeze them and put them up a 
five foot raised bed or grow more greens than a, me and my wife's gonna eat and I eat a lot of greens. Matter of fact, tonight may be one of them nights to where all I eat is just these greens and cornbread. So many, and I just like greens. If I got greens and cornbread, I'm happy. Sometimes if I got beans and cornbread, that's all I want. I don't need no five course meal. There's a lot of evenings I'll be out here and I'm like, hmm. I'll pull some of that rainbow char and I'll bring it up here and lay it on a piece of tin foil and kind of steam it up on the grill here. I just ain't a picky eater. I can eat just meat. I can eat just grass, I guess. <laughs> but guys, that's all it is to how I cook it. We'll look at them later on. Well, friends, supper's ready. I come through a couple of times and give these a flop over. But look at that. Give me some cornbread tonight. I'm going to show you all what a good supper is. I just turned them down extra low because I knew I was out there going to be busy and I'd forget about them, and I sure did. I'm glad I turned them down extra low. So they just kind of been sitting here at a slow, slow simmer. Well, guys, it's time to dig in. We got our fresh mustard greens here. Some Mexican cornbread. And I grabbed me a Two or three little radishes on the way in. Y'all see that white stuff on that cornbread? Some of you don't think I'm crazy. But I like putting mayonnaise on my cornbread and on my homemade biscuits sometimes. Yeah, just plain old meal. You ought to try it sometime. You might like it. But greens, people need to eat more greens. You've got a big choice to choose from. Mustard greens, collard greens, turnip greens, rutabaga greens, Asia greens. Beet green, reddish green. Some people eat the greens off these reddishes. Now, that's one thing I don't. I tried the reddish greens and the beet greens. And if that's all I had to eat, I'd eat them. But as long as I got other greens, I don't see no sense in eating tops off the beet. Rabbits got to have something to eat, don't But guys, this here's a this here's a full meal for me. A person can raise enough mustard greens in one of them 30 gallon pots I got out there. If you don't want to eat them off the light, but you know, just get you a mess every couple of weeks. One of them 30 gallon pots. Paint them thick with mustard greens like that. Eat your first mess when they're real little. Tender greens, I call them. Then next time, let them grow up a little bigger and then eat you some. But you can grow a lot of food in small places. Guys, I know that was a short little video, but I just wanted to show y'all that you can grow a lot of greens in a five foot raised bed and how I prepare mine real quick and simple when I'm outside working. I just throw them in the pot there outside and when I get ready to come in, I grab my pot on the way in. <laughs> but I hope y'all have a great day and a blessed week. God bless. See y'all next time.